What's up, everybody? Wesley Shoemaker back with you today with the BlueGoldSports.com podcast. We have a great interview with the 68th Mountaineer in West Virginia University history, Mary Roush, and that is it today. So if you do listen to it, we do appreciate you listening, and let's get into the interview right now. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the BlueGoldSports.com podcast. It is my pleasure to be joined by the 68th Mountaineer in West Virginia University history, Mary Roush. Um, Mary, how are you doing today? I'm good. Glad to be here. Uh, so just kind of start here. Uh, from Mason, West Virginia, uh, just talk about your journey from there to WVU. Yeah, so I'm from Mason, West Virginia, which is also in Mason County. Um, It's over right along the Ohio River. I always say that it's in between Parkersburg and Huntington um, because those are like kind of big landmarks around me. Um, My county is home of the Mothman. So that's pretty much what we're known for. Um, I, you know, grew up in a very like loving family. Um, uh, My parents were did a very good job at, you know, making me realize the significance of, you know, living in West Virginia they always made sure I was very proud of where I was from, like a lot of, they, you know, raised me with like a lot of like fundamental values um, that definitely led me to here and being the Mountaineer. What, what kind of values were those? Like, how did they kind of inspire you to just be the best person that you could be? Yeah. So I always like to reference it to like the Mountaineer core values because they, I mean, they really align a lot, which is kind of ironic to think about today. Um, But those are service, curiosity, respect, accountability, and appreciation. And I can, can, can completely say that all five of those are definitely fundamental values that my parents instilled on me growing up. And um, so it, you know, it kind of worked out. You, you, you talk about how the, they instilled that with you. And then obviously now that you are the mascot, was there any push from them to kind of become the mascot or what, what kind of inspired you or drew you towards wanting to become the mascot? It was really my idea. Um, I feel like growing up, I tried probably every single sport in the book. You know, I would do dance, theater, like any like extracurricular activity I did just because I always wanted to try new things. And every single time I would come home and be like, hey, mom and dad, can I sign up for this? They'd always say yes. And they were always very supportive of my journey and anything I ever wanted to get involved in. So I think when I told them, hey, I think I'm going to try out to be the Mountaineer, they were just like, oh, okay like sounds good so they were supportive through all of it but I don't think it really shocked them that much because they were like oh okay it's just another like endeavor she's going after you talk about that you said you're going to sign up to try and be the mountaineer I don't think many people know the process and everything that goes behind it so could you kind of just talk about what that process was like from the start all the way to the end yeah so um from start to finish it's about a three-month process which is very intimidating, um, especially for me, because I was so young, you know, I was a freshman trying out, I'm so new to campus. And then, you know, I'm, I'm striving after a goal that in my mind was like, almost unachievable, just because, you know, I felt like I was so young, and I had a lot of things holding me back. Um, But to start out, you have to have a application. And with that, you have to have two letters of recommendation, one being from a full-time staff member, and you also have to write five different essays, um, just about, you know, different things about the university, different things about the state. Um, Like, for example, um, an essay was, you know, who is your favorite Mountaineer? Like, which one's your biggest role model? And then which one do you think served the position, like, the best? Um, another one was like, what does Montani Semper Liberi mean to you? So just different things like that. So they could get a little bit of your personality, your character, you know, just a little bit of why you really want to be the Mountaineer. Um, and then from there, they pick about 10 
to go to an in-person interview with the selection committee, which is about 20 people from all over the university. I mean, university relations, athletics, former Mountaineers, like very like intimidating, like very successful people. So, and like, that was like very professional. Like I had to, you know, wear a suit. Like that was probably, probably like, out of all of it, that was probably the hardest part for me just because it was so scary to walk into a room and just see like 20 people and like especially like the former Mountaineers you know like obviously like Colson's in there I see Timmy and Trevor you know all people I look up to and then I see them like looking at me and I'm like oh Barry please don't mess this up so um that was really hard but um you know I made I obviously made it through um from there they picked the final four to do the cheer off which is at a home men's basketball game where you get one half of the game to you know be in buckskins get a musket wear the coonskin cap all the above and pretty much you just go around with the fans and do some cheers and pretty much the selection committee is there they're all spread out um but they're watching you to see how you interact with fans you know once you know how you act as a mountaineer when you're actually in that role and then from there they pick the one and only mountaineer so what what was that feeling like i during the the cheer off first just with there were a lot of fans there there's a lot of screaming there I know um what was that like just kind of your first experience in a way and you're also still trying to get this position in this role yeah um I mean it was awesome I mean it was a dream come true I had been dreaming that I was going to be the Mountaineer for a really long time and I just went into it with the mindset of hey you know maybe this isn't my year maybe I'm not going to win but this might I was like I never know what's going to happen in life this may be my only chance that I'm ever going to get to wear buckskins and to be the Mountaineer so why not live it up to my fullest potential and that you know I channeled that energy and you know I was so nervous like leading up to it but as soon as I like got out like it, like in like the concourse like of the coliseum and they're like okay go you can start like the nerves kind of went away and so i think it was just like i channeled my inner mountaineer and it just it, w- it was almost easy in a way i guess um just because i was in the moment and i i didn't put that pressure on myself of oh my gosh like you have to do so well like you know everyone's watching you i just i completely blocked that out and was just like listen go out have fun you're the mountaineer for 20 minutes of a basketball game you know live it up and I did so I think that definitely helped me out a lot did you have a plan of how you wanted to kind of do things or was it just in the moment do whatever comes to my mind in in that moment yeah so I kind of thought I mean I tried to strategize However, a lot of it is just in the moment of coming up with what you want to do. And that's a lot of my role as the Mountaineer now is a lot of, you know, making decisions right like in the moment because you never know how fans are going to act towards you or what's going to happen. Um, so an issue with me is that the shoes that they because the Buxons we wear, they're all like older people like they don't you know they're just like handy downs. So they usually don't fit. And the shoes they had for me were like three sizes way too big like they did not fit at all and like I tried stuffing them with tissue paper but like it was just it was not cutting it and like they weren't lace-up moccasins they were just like slide-ons so pretty much like my shoes didn't fit and I was trying like my goal was like I wanted to get up in the stands however like my shoes were so big and like pretty much falling off my feet like it, it was like I was in clown shoes that I like physically could not get up and down the steps because I was like if I like it it just took me too long and you know you're timed and you've got to hit certain points so I just focused on like interactions like I would walk in the sands like don't get me wrong like I'd still move around but I would sit there and have a whole conversation with somebody you know I wouldn't just move around and try to get as many let's go chance as I could I mean I was doing the let's go chance but I also would stop and sit down and say hey how are you today be like who's your favorite player things like that. And I think that also really helped me a lot because, you know, if the selection committee noticed that they could see, you know, oh, you know, she's able to converse with fans, everything like that. And, you know, you can see the smile on their faces. I guess they were enjoying the conversation because that's a very, very big part of being the Mountaineer is being able to communicate with fans and have, you know, conversations. Did the selection committee talk to you about the game and talk to you about what went well and what didn't go well, or did they think that you did an overall really well, really good job. 
Um, yeah, so they, I really didn't get much feedback. Um, so I think kind of like once I won, it was kind of like, well, like you don't really need feedback. Cause like, you, you know, you're it. Um, so they didn't really tell me much. Um, there was no, like, they'd never like really hand me back like my papers or anything like that. Um, however, like I would say that I'm very close with Trevor, Timmy and Colson, and they are all, they all were on the selection committee. So like I, you know, after I won, like we had talked and they, I was like, I was like, you guys can be honest. Like, how did I do? Like, you know, was I the best? Like, how did I score at these things? And they said, no, like you definitely like were the best. So like we picked you for a reason, like you, you did great. So I did get feedback in that way of them just like reassuring me that like, you know, I did, I did well. So I, I mean, nobody came back and was like, you did this wrong fix it so I guess I'm good <laughs> the, the moment of truth when you found out that it was going to be you did you have any idea going in that you were possibly going to get picked did you hear any rumors any whispers or were you just hoping and praying that you were going to get picked yeah, um, I had absolutely no clue, which I guess that was the good thing about being a freshman is I guess I didn't really know that many people on campus. So that like, you know, if there were rumors and things around, they didn't get back to me because I, I mean, I didn't know anybody like and everyone was like, we thought you knew like we thought you they had to tell you before I said no. I was like, when I found out when they announced my name, that was a complete like raw reaction. And I never like I was not like confident in it. Um, you know, I didn't think it was going to be be me. Um, not because I didn't think that like I was good enough. It was just one of those things as, oh, I'm so young. It's just probably not my time. Um, so I was like, you know, I'm going to try, but I was like, they're probably going to want me to be the Mountaineer when I'm like a junior or senior, just because that was what, I mean, that's how it goes. I mean, the majority of the time, you know, the Mountaineers are older and they're in, you know, junior seniors in grad school. So I thought honestly that that's just how it worked. And I didn't know a freshman really could win. So I was never like really confident. I mean, obviously the end goal was always hoping that I could win, but I never thought that this would be my year. Um, so like when we were in the tunnel, I was like, man, I just hope I get alternate. Like I'm just, that would be really amazing just to get like second place, you know, and like never like they're like, who do you think's going to win? I wasn't saying me just because <laughs> I thought, I thought my age was holding me back. And I mean, luckily it didn't. And they called my name and like, you, you can look at pictures, you can look at videos, like my jaw quite literally dropped. I mean, I was completely in shock and just like, I mean, it's the craziest feeling that you like, it's undes it's indescribable. Like I can't explain to you well enough, like what I was feeling because I don't really remember being, you know, like I was so so like excited that I was just like I just kind of blacked out for all of it I mean it was I mean it's crazy to think about you know like I just got announced in front of like 14,000 fans like in the Coliseum you know somewhere I've been going as a child and you know like looking I mean it, I'm, it the whole thing I can't even describe it it was such an amazing feeling so did you go to Mountaineer games as a child was it where your fan did your family attend WVU is there a connection there or how how did you kind of relate to West Virginia growing up? Yeah. So, um, actually like nobody in my family has ever went to WVU, um, which is a very, like, I guess, cool fact about me is I'm like first generation WVU. Um, so I think that's pretty cool because, um, it was, it's kind of my thing, you know, I never really had to like live up to like legacies of my parents or anything like that. Um, however, like I did, you know, growing up, like go to WVU games, um, my hometown's like three hours away. So I wasn't like privileged to like, you know, we didn't have season tickets or like make it up as much as we wanted to, but definitely like once I got in high school, I started, you know, I was at the age where I was really able to come to games. And, um, also, you know, high school's the time where I was looking at colleges. And I mean, as soon as I stepped foot on WVU's campus, I knew it was the place for me. And I, I, I just knew it was the college for me, mainly because, you know, growing up, my family and my parents always, you know, tried to like instill in me, like, you know, be proud of where you're from. Like, we love West Virginia. Um, so like, it didn't matter, you know, if it was WVU, if it was Marshall, if it was University of Charleston, like, it didn't matter. Like, we would go to all games because like, I was just raised to love the state no matter what, you know, we're all West Virginians, we're all Mountaineers, like, that's just the way I was raised. So 
you know, coming to WVU, I really liked it because I felt like the university's culture matched the culture of the state. And they had like they had very like similar just like vibes, um, I guess you could say. So I think that's one of the big reasons why I just fell in love with it. And that's I mean, that's my main reason on why I wanted to become the Mountaineer, because obviously I grew up loving the state and, you know, being the Mountaineer is the best way to give back and, and to have outreach and to make the state better and visit the state. Then on top of that, I love WVU and, you know, I, I want to be an ambassador for the university. So you're the first freshman and third woman ever to be the Mountaineer. First off, how does that feel? And then second, have you talked to any of the other previous two women Mountaineers and do you look up to them? And what's kind of that been like to know that you're in a way making history every day that you're the Mountaineer? Uh, yeah it's pretty crazy to think about it that way um you know I try to kind of like block that stuff out because like I know it's so amazing that like you know I'm like making history but it also like freaks me out when I think about it too much um but no it's amazing to you know be able to put a girl back in the buckskins and you know I'm just excited because you know I get to inspire a new generation you know we haven't had um, a female be the Mountaineer since 2009 with Rebecca and at that point I was six years old so um that's kind of crazy but I mean you know me I'm inspired like there's a whole new generation that needs to see that a girl or actually actually anybody, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like, or where you're from can be the Mountaineer. So um, I'm really excited to, you know, do that and give back. Um, I have met Natalie and Rebecca, they came to the passing the rifle ceremony. And like, I have seen them at other events and talked to them as well. And they are very, very kind and helping me and they are very excited for me, which is oh, that that means a lot. Um, and they definitely are role models. I mean, I would have never had the courage to apply if it wasn't for them you know like they broke that glass ceiling for me you know they took a, you know especially Natalie took a lot of the abuse um with you know being you know a lot of people didn't like to see a girl as the Mountaineer so luckily um you know it's a it's a better day and age now so I don't really face that as much as her or Rebecca did but you know they also I mean that it was stepping stones you know they you know led the way for me to be able to take this role so I'm very fortunate that you know I'm able to follow in their footsteps look up to them you know have them as friends and um, you know have be able to reach out to them you know if anything happens so it's very it's very good to have them in my corner I guess. You do know, though, that 2009 was the year that the men's basketball team went to the final four. You are aware of that. Just, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Going back to Natalie and Rebecca. So did were, you said you wrote that essay about your favorite Mountaineer and why they inspire you. Were one of those two the subject of your essay or was it a different Mountaineer that was your favorite? Yeah, so I actually wrote that Natalie was um, my role model just because, you know, obviously she – you know, what took a lot of stepping, I mean, you know, she broke the glass ceiling. I would have never applied if it wasn't for her. I don't think like it was hard enough to apply as such a, a freshman. Um, and, you know, as a girl, but if I would have been the first girl, I don't know if I would have had the courage to do that. So I'm glad that, you know, obviously she's my role model because she got me to where I am for the Mountaineer that I feel like has done the position, the bet, like most justice, I think is the prompt. I actually wrote about Colson. So um, it's really funny because I don't, no, I was naive when it came to this, but I thought that Colson wouldn't be in the selection committee. Why I thought that, I don't know. But I was like, oh, it's probably a conflict of interest if the cur current Mountaineer is on the committee. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to write about Colson. It's no big deal. He won't read it. And then he's on the committee. So then afterwards, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's embarrassing <laughs> that you like had to read what like, you know, me like hyping you up. But I mean, it's all it's all fine now. But um, yeah, I wrote about him just because I feel like he had a very tough time with COVID and everything going on with that. You know, he was special and unique. He got a second year. And, you know, I wrote in my essay, you know, when fans needed the Mountaineer most, Colson was there. So I feel like he did a very good job and I'm honored to follow in his footsteps and have him, you know, as a friend to definitely help me out and he's done a great job with helping me out because there's a lot of random questions that you th you know think of as the Mountaineer that I'm like wait what do I do here and so he's been great 
I've been able to, you know, call them and say, hey, Colson, what do I do? So it's really awesome to have that community of former Mountaineers. So have you kind of a more personal question with this? Have you faced any of the backlash or hate that Natalie faced? Have you seen that from anyone? Has anyone said anything towards you? Or do you feel like this is finally a point where we are turning a page and this is more of a new normal than an exception? Um, I think a little bit of both. I definitely think in this day and age, there's, you know, a lot of people think it is normal, but however, you know, it's still always going to be like, oh, we have a girl. Um, and like, that's fine. But most of the time, a lot of people are very excited to see me as the Mountaineer, you know, just because people like change and it's a fresh look um, for the Mountaineer. So I think a lot of people like it. Um, I'm not facing as much, you know, abuse as Natalie or Rebecca face just because, I mean, it is 2022. I think these things are more accepted. Um, however, there still has been people who are like, Hey, you need to have a beard. And I'm just like, I just usually joke about it. And like, I, I found that like, that's the best thing to do. Um, most likely I'm not going to change their mind and there's no reason to like argue with them. So most of the time when people say, Oh, where's your beard? I go, I don't know. I'm trying to grow it. It just won't come in. <laughs> And oh. we laugh, we laugh about it. You know, we take a picture and we move on. Like it's no biggie people. I really haven't faced anyone who has been like completely like aggressive towards me or anything like that. Now, social media is a different story. I think people like to say whatever they want on there about me, which that comes with any mountaineer, but um, I've got to the point now where I just choose not to read it. Um, I had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> How, but I mean, like in person, most of the time people are very, very, very excited for me and I feel like the people that maybe don't support it they just ignore me they just don't even come up to me and that's fine I'm like if you I mean if you're not it's fine it's cool so I mean I'm working with it I'm running with it I knew that was part of the job and that's just you know one of the things I got to deal with and it's it's okay <laughs> what was your first time firing the musket how did it feel was it was it scary what what was that like yeah, so it was definitely very scary. Obviously, I had fired it a lot, like practicing, um, because, you know, obviously I have to learn like what to do. And like my dad has a muzzle loader and, you know, taught me like what he knew. So like I had been around it and everything like that. But my very first official shot was at the spring game for the entrance video. And that was so intimidating because that is like the one shot that you have to have go off um for football and basketball the entrance video sh shot I mean that's like the only like real shot that people are like waiting for and expecting like they know it's coming so um you know that one was very important so I was like completely nervous like I was freaking out like the whole the whole morning of the spring game I was just have like I was just freaking out I mean like I was calm because I knew I was doing everything right I knew I loaded it right Colson was there and he's like I'll load it for you if it makes you feel better and I was like no like it's fine I was like I've got it but I was definitely like just sitting there praying I'm like please go off please go off because I was just I, I mean I was nervous about what other people would think and like that's one of those things I gotta let go but I was like oh my gosh, it's my very first day. If I miss my first shot, I'm like, they'll probably fire me. That's what, that was like in my mind. Um, um, but obviously it went off, everything went well, but the adrenaline rush of firing the musket is amazing. People ask me all the time, like, oh, like, does the musket kick? And I'm like, I have no clue because when I fire that thing, like I'm such like on an adrenaline high that I'm not thinking about if it's kicking or not. Like it's, it's very exciting because, you know, there's a lot that goes into it and, you know, muskets are, and you know like the type of gun we have are very like there's a reason people don't hunt with it anymore and that it's an old type of gun because it does like misfire and like there's a lot like that goes into it to make it work um so when that thing goes off it's just like the, like you can like you have so much relief because you're like yes it went off like I don't have to worry about it breaking or anything like that because there's a lot of troubleshooting that goes with it kind of pivoting now to a little bit of West Virginia sports. So you said you grew up kind of watching West Virginia and following them. And then as you got in high school, what was your favorite like WV sports moment? And who's, who was your favorite athlete uh, from WV growing up? Oh, okay. Um, so definitely my favorite. Well, I mean, it depends. So, okay. Um, growing up, I guess 
My favorite athlete is definitely Will Greer, just because that was at the peak of when I was deciding I wanted to come to WVU. And so like a lot of that, you know, I was coming to all these football games. I was watching, you know, the amazing Will Greer, you know, our team was really good. And, you know, that was, that put so much into me deciding that WVU was go like, you know, that was going to be my school. So like, I definitely, and you know, especially that Texas game that year with like the whole horns down. I mean, that was, that was pretty awesome. Um, so I guess that I would say like, that's my favorite part of like growing up that I can think of. However, um, I also really love, um, Owen Schmidt. Um, if you've ever watched the interview of him, um, when he talks about like when they won and they beat Oklahoma, um, I lo- like I absolutely love that moment in sports. I mean, at that time, I was so young that I like barely remember that. So like, that's why I'm like, oh, I don't know. But now it's like one of those things I look back on. I said, man, like every time I watch that interview, I'm like, I'm proud to be a West Virginian because like I just love that one so much. And it really like speaks to me. So like that time period also um, is something that I really like to look back on and, you know, watch like highlight reels and things like that. So. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, do you have a favorite game you've been to, either basketball, football, any sport growing up? Do you have like a favorite one you've been to? Yeah, so um, back in like I want, I, I guess it was like 2018. It's like Will Gers last year or whatever. Yep. Um, we went to the Camping World Bowl in F- Florida, um, and my dad surprised me like with tickets, and he's like, "We're going, like we're gonna go to Florida. We're going to the Camping World Bowl," and like I was so excited because it's like, oh my gosh, like I get to see Will Greer again. But then obviously he didn't play in that game because he was getting ready for the draft, which was like very disappointing. But um, it was still a really really cool experience and probably like one of my favorite games because it wasn't at Mountaineer Field um which made it unique and is like kind of the reason I love it um because me like my dad and I went um you know we're in Florida like not even near West Virginia at all but it was like so amazing for me to see like all the West Virginia fans there and like everybody that came from far and wide to watch this bowl game to watch us lose you know like we lost to Syracuse like it it it, kind of sucked but um it was like, I don't know, I guess that was just like my pivotal moment where I like realized I was like, man, like I just like love being from West Virginia. Like I am so proud of where I'm from. And every single person in that stadium was proud to be from West Virginia. And, you know, my dad uh, in the moment, I was super embarrassed that he did this, but like on the way home, you know, like we're leaving the stadium and we've got like a long walk to our car. Um, I don't, I don't even know where our car was. I think actually that we had to get on a train or something. We had to walk a lot in like downtown Orlando. Um, but the whole entire walk, my dad would just scream, let's go. And then, you know, people, fans just on the street would respond, Mountaineers. And like in the moment, I was like so embarrassed. And I'm like, dad, stop. Like, you know, you're drawing attention to us. But now I look back on it and I'm like, that was one of the coolest moments because it's like, we're not even in West Virginia and we lost, you know, like we're, we're all mad that we didn't even win. But yet here we are in the streets of Orlando, still like rooting on the Mountaineers. And like, I don't know, that was just one of like my favorite like moments and like favorite games and like things to go to just because it was so awesome to see you know Mountaineer Nation not at Mountaineer Field you know I got to see them somewhere else um somewhere not near you know um WVU and I don't know I was just it's really cool for me and it's a really good memory has it come full circle that you're now the one leading the let's go chance after you were embarrassed about them then has that come full circle yet no, um, it hasn't. People still ask me that. They're like, do you realize that you're like a celebrity and that, you know, like this and that? And I'm like, no, like I do. Obvi- like, obviously I do. But like life hasn't really came full circle yet. I'm, you know, I'm so in shock. And, you know, I'm very, very grateful to be in this position. I mean, in my opinion, like this is the biggest honor any West Virginian could ever do. And, you know, to do it so young, like I'm so grateful that I was given this opportunity opportunity um but I think it won't really come full circle until probably football season when you know the stadium's packed and ever and I can hear everyone you know shouting back the cheer that I started I think that's gonna be my moment where I realize like okay I've made it like I'm the Mountaineer (laughs) 
so you've you've worked some baseball games you've been the mountaineer there um what was that like obviously kind of threw you into the fire in a little bit end of a big 12 season i think pit game was in there there were a lot of big games against big teams and you were out there going strong what was that like this spring yeah, baseball was awesome. Um, I really had never been to a baseball game. Like I had been as a student, but like never like growing up did I ever go to baseball. So it was like a really cool opportunity because like I was learning while I was there um, just because like I what you know, I had it's not like football where it's like you've been going all you know, I had to learn a lot while also being there. But I mean, it it was awesome. Like I love baseball. It definitely like exceeded my expectations. I, I really liked our team. The guys were like so awesome and they worked really hard and, you know, coming in, I was very nervous because, you know, I was like, obviously, you know, Colson started baseball season and then the passing of the rifle happens like right in the middle. So I was like, I don't know how the players are going to react to like a new mountaineer, but like they were awesome. You know, coach Maisie was amazing. They were all like very, very welcoming. And that made me feel like a lot, a lot better better about like you know coming in because I was obviously nervous it was like my first like sporting season but um it was a really fun time and I really enjoyed you know meeting so many um of like the season ticket holders and just everybody that like you know the frequent baseball players you know I had I had kids who like I would see like every baseball game and we'd get a picture every time and it was just a really cool moment to like you know get like slowly get into the role and realize my significance and you know how I'm making an impact on Mountaineer Nation so it was a really awesome season. I, I can't help but notice when I was there that I saw you talking to a lot of the opposing players. Is that something that they came up to you? Did you go to them? Uh, it seemed like there was always a lot of chatter between you and the opposing dugout. Yeah. So, um, no, they never really said anything to me. That was kind of my initiative. Um, every single time I would walk past their dugout, like after, you know, the first shot in the national anthem, I'd always say, Hey, good luck guys. And then I'd always usually be like, how, how are you guys like in Morgantown? You know, just think like small talk because, and I would also do that with the opposing fan base too. I would, I, my, personal opinion is you know we all have our rivalries and we all have our opinions but for me as the mountaineer is I know that when these people are traveling into our state into our school that I am you know I'm representing and I'm what they're going to remember because I'm the one in with a gun and really weird clothes so you know most like, and like I'm unlike other mascots I can speak so I know that you know I'm leaving an impact on these visiting fans and I don't want to you know be a snob and I don't want to be like that like I want to you know, give them a good experience. And I hope that when they come to Morgantown, they really enjoy it. So I always tried to be very friendly and, you know, have small talk with them. And, you know, obviously I would, you know, wish the opposing team good luck because, you know, they, I mean, they are playing in a game. So like, I wish them the best of luck. I mean, I hope we win, but, you know, I still hope they, you know, do well. Nobody gets hurt, things like that. So. So going back to base, what was it like the first time singing Country Roads with with everyone there in kind of a stadium atmosphere? Obviously, the spring game, you did it, but it's not the same as actually beating someone in a game and then singing it after that. What was that like? Oh, I mean, it was amazing. Country Roads is one of my favorite college traditions. It's one of my favorite WVU traditions. Um, I've been singing Country Roads since I came out of the womb. So, um, you know, since I could, uh, since I learned how to speak, my parents were teaching me the words of Country Roads. So I guess that would be my full circle moment, I would say, is because I've, you know, my whole life I've been singing Country Roads. And now then in that moment, you know, I finally got to sing it after a win, being the Mountaineer. So um, it was definitely definitely an experience like no other but it's very exciting and I hope I'm singing country roads a whole lot more this year are, are there any rules about when you're in a game situation or when there's a game going on what are what are there any rules or are you kind of free to do what you please um yeah so there are rules um, each sport is very different um, you can, there's only certain points that I can fire the musket, um, you know, like each, you know, for baseball, for instance, I fire at the beginning, I fire if we get a home run, and then I'll fire if we win. So it's like those types of things are like timed out to where it's like, you know, I don't just get to fire whenever I want to, those things are planned just for like the safety aspect. Um, so in those cases, like for baseball, like, 
I have to be out, like, I can't be under the overhang when we're up to bat. Like, so I would have to, you know, there's certain places I got to move, but for the most part at any sporting event, it's up to me. You know, I'm making my decisions on where I need to be, you know, athletics will be like, Hey, go here, you know, go up to the club, talk to those people and be like, okay. And obviously marketing's like, Hey, we need you for a t-shirt toss, things like that. But ultimately when it comes to deciding who I'm going to talk to or where I'm going to do this, that, and that, like, that's all me, which um, is a very like hard part of the job um, and things that, you know, we've, that I think the selection committee looks at because you've got to be able to make those split second decisions and you've got to be able to have like that common sense and be like, okay, this is happening. What do I do? So yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, it's, I'm kind of like my own boss in a way, you know, I have people telling me what to do and giving me guidance, but at the end of the day, I'm the one making the split second decisions. Do, doing the mascot cam, how fun is that holding up that camera and finding people? How fun was that during baseball season? Oh, that was really awesome. And I'm glad that's something that, you know, we could bring, you know, that's new for um, athletics. That's new for the Mountaineer. Um, but I actually was an intern before I was a Mountaineer with um, – you know, WV Athletics video. Um, so I love that crew. And that's how we came up with that idea. Um, because, you know, I have like, I did work with them. I like did some training, like I knew how to operate camera kind of. Um, so like we came up with that idea. And I think the fans really liked it and got like very excited because it was something new that nobody's really ever seen before. So that's really exciting that like, you know, I'm like my first month in the job, I'm already, you know, coming, like, we're already coming up with new ideas to do with the Mountaineer. So I really enjoyed it and it was fun. It was something different. You're a college or media student. Of course you can operate a camera. Um, but <laughs> to your parents, when was the first time they saw you as the Mountaineer? Have they gotten to see you yet? Were they at the uh, that basketball game where you were chosen? What was what was kind of that process like in them their first time seeing you as the Mountaineer? Yeah. So it's actually funny. So when I like started college and everything, like I didn't really see my parents that much. I didn't go home. You know, they might, they might, like they came up a few times, but like, it was one of those things. It's like, okay, I'll see you like in five weeks. You know, I really didn't see them. And now like being the Mountaineer, I'm busy than ever. I can't even go home to see them, but I've seen them more while I've been the Mountaineer than when I was just a regular college student. Um, just because they are very, very, um, you know, excited for me and proud of me. And, you know, they realize just as much as I do is I only get one year at this, you know, I only get one opportunity. There's only one, you know, opening baseball game, you know, things like that. So they try to make it to like everything they can. Um, they, this is a really funny story. So when I did my cheer off, um, like my parents were so excited that they sold about a hundred tickets from people from my hometown, from Mason County. And like, that's like a three hour drive, a little less, but still like, that's a long trip. So they sold about a hundred tickets and then about 50 of those tickets all came on a charter bus that my parents organized. So they had this whole like fun bus plus all these other people, like, you know, a hundred Mason Countyans all coming to watch me do the cheer off. Like not even like I hadn't even won yet. They all just wanted to like come support me. So that's just a testament on how like, you know, grateful and like how awesome my community is and how proud they and my parents are of me. But, um, you know, that was the first time they really saw me in Buckskins. But, you know, the first time they saw me as the Mountaineer was spring game. Um, they came for that. And I've also like I had another event in Charleston that they came to see me. Um, I did uh, coaches caravan in Parkersburg. They came. So like they there, like anything that is close to home or, you know, that they can make a weekend out of, they will come up um, to see me and watch me. And I think they plan. I mean, obviously, they're going to come to every home football game. And I think they plan on going to a lot of the away games which I'm like very very grateful that you know where my parents are in a place where they can do that and like come support me but um when it goes to like them seeing me for the first time they just cried they cried like little babies like my dad my mom my grandparents like literally everybody was just sobbing up in the, the stands like it was it was crazy um you know I, I was I was crying like I was hugging on them they were able to come up the next weekend when I was announced um so I didn't have a hundred people there for that but I probably had about 20 to 30 people of like my close family and friends who all came and that meant a lot too because I was like guys I could have lost and you guys could have just came up here for that and they're like well we got to see a basketball game out of it you know like they you know just ma made the most out of it but um I didn't lose like they it, they happened but again like my parents weren't expecting it either so um 
I like joke because like my parents obviously like were videoing it and like all the videos are just them sobbing. So it's like really funny because it's like, I'm trying to look back and like, remember like the greatest moment of my life, but like all the videos are terrible because like my parents are just crying in all of them. But I mean, Hey, like that's memories. Like I'm, I'm going to be grateful. They're crying in it one day. Like, so they're awesome. I mean, I, I love my parents and you know, I, I owe a lot of it to them. Um, I owe it a lot all to them really, because I wouldn't be here today without them. So I'm glad that they get to come support me. <laughs> Talking about football season, how excited are you for football season? Obviously, you're going to have the, the home games, but then you also have a couple of rivalry games, Virginia Tech, Pitt. I think you probably, as a West Virginia fan, are looking forward to those games. Then obviously you get to travel to other Big 12 schools like Texas. Um, what's, what's that like? Have you thought about it? Have you thought about kind of September 1st against Pitt yet? Or has that? are you going to cross that bridge when you get there? Um, a little bit of both. I definitely think about it. Um, I'm so excited because obviously football is like, like the peak of like WVU and like, you know, being the Mountaineer, like that's what everybody says. It's like, what's your favorite memory all football season? I mean, it's insane. I don't think like from me talking to former Mountaineers, there's no better feeling than, you know, being in a packed 60,000 fan stadium, like rooting in all the Mountaineers, like there's nothing better than that. So I'm like very excited because it's going to be an adrenaline rush of a lifetime, but I'm, also very nervous because that means like the pressure is on um you know especially when it comes to buying the musket I've got to make sure like I'm doing everything all right I got to make sure the musket doesn't break and misfire like there's a lot of things that go into it I got to make sure take care of my health I got to make sure I'm drinking I'm hydrating I'm eating because I do have to do a bunch of push-ups um you know on top of being in the blue lot all morning so like there's a lot of like physical aspect that goes into it that I'm really nervous for but like like ultimately I'm like above the moon, like so excited because it's going to be probably the greatest experience of my life. So it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, the pit game I'm super pumped for, um, but also very nervous because of course, like they couldn't make it easy on me. My very first game as the Mountaineer, you know, is against pit, you know, the back backyard brawl I don't like we haven't even played them since like 2011 I think so like we're coming back and then you know we're on Heinz Field it's it's gonna be sold out like we already know that um you know it's there's probably gonna be more Mountaineer fans there than Pitt so it's like all these like amazing things like everyone's so excited I'm like I'm so nervous (laughs) um just because like you know I don't want to mess up and I want to be the best Mountaineer I can be but on top of I just I'm I've so far been really good at channeling my nerves into excitement so um you know right now we're still like 93 92 days out I don't know um so we have some time and I have a lot of time to you know get ready on those push-ups um but yeah I'm very very excited for football season you talk about those push-ups new quarterback new offensive coordinator you could be doing a lot of them are you ready and uh have you been practicing what's what's that been like Oh yeah, I've been practicing. I mean, like I do my, I do push-ups like every day. Um, I, you know, I've been going to the gym a lot, like since the summer, I've kind of been able to have a little bit, not that much, but a, like a tad bit more time to work out. So like, I'm trying my best because I want to be able to do all of them. I really hope I can. Um, just because that's a tradition that's been going on for decades and I don't want to you know, I don't want to be the mountaineer that like can't do push ups. So like, uh, especially because I'm a girl, but I'm like, I'm trying my hardest, you know, I'm really trying to like, build up my strength and get to that point. But I definitely feel like I'm going to be doing a lot of push ups. I feel very, very good about our offense and our football team. So um, hopefully for the team's sake and for everyone's sake, hopefully I'm doing a lot of push ups. So you don't want West Virginia to score 80 points against Pitt September 1st? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, that's a hard one because people keep asking me. I'm like, at the end of the day, I've got to say, I hope they're scoring as many as we can. But, like, internally, I'm just like, guys, can we win but just make it a low-scoring game? Um, But, no, I don't care. As long as we win, I'll suck it up. At the end of the day, it's not about me and my push-ups. If we get a win, then I'm fine. Like, I'll I'll do them. Or or I'll just pass out. It's fine. (laughs) Do you have a prediction (laughs) record-wise for how you think football is going to do this year? If you had to give your prediction, what would it be? uh, I don't. I haven't – I guess I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, I hope – I'm thinking – 
I don't really know prediction wise, but I think that this is going to be um, a really good season. I think we're going to have a winning season. I hope so. Um, I, I'm hoping for at least a, about eight wins. Um, that's I, I, I'm good with that. Um, but, you know, we got to trust the climb. Um, I love that saying and I say it a lot um, just in my everyday life. So especially when I'm like doing the push ups in my bedroom and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm like, trust the climb, Mary. Like, we got it. So I, I think we just got to believe in our team and, you know, believe in our coaches. I think this is um, this is Neil Brown's like first recruiting class, I think. Right. So I think this will be I think it'll be a good season. I'm very excited. I think there's a lot of potential. Who's your favorite coach that you've interacted with? Um, do you have a favorite or have you gotten to meet all of them yet? What's that been like? Yeah, so luckily I've been doing the coaches caravan. So I've been able to like, you know, like talk to a lot of coaches and like get to know them pretty well. And my favorite, like I can't like I'm, I hate to say it, but like Huggy is my favorite so far. I mean, he's just like so hilarious and I was very intimidated because it's like, you know, I'm straight out of the womb. I probably already knew who Bob Huggins was like, you know, he's like the, he's amazing. And like my whole life, he was just like, Oh, you know, coach Huggins, everything like that. So I was very nervous to meet him because I was like, Oh my gosh, like, what's he going to say? What am I going to say? Like, I was so nervous, but then like, he was just like a normal guy and all the coaches are, it's like, I was like terrified to meet him, but I'm like, at the end of the day, like, yeah, they're coaches and like, yeah, they're famous, but like, they're just normal they're just people so like they're all amazing like and they all have been so sweet and welcoming to me and I'm so excited um but you know you know coach Huggins is hilarious I also really like coach P she is very very nice um and so I'm excited to see what she does with women's basketball this season um but like ultimately like I can't say a bad word about any of the coaches they're all awesome did, did you have a favorite sport playing that you played growing up? I know you said you played a lot of sports, but did you have a favorite one and then you kind of are attracted to, to or kind of go to that coach more or do you just really not care? Um, no, I don't really care. Um, growing up, like I really, really liked volleyball. That was my sport. That's what I played throughout high school. Um, so I, I really liked that. I also um, was like the manager for the girls basketball team. So like I love basketball. Um, I love basketball and volleyball. So those are definitely like my two favorite sports. Um, so I don't feel like that'll draw me towards um, like different coaches or anything like that. But because um, I, I really appreciate all of them. I'm excited for all sports. I'm really excited for gymnastics season um because I think that I love gymnastics that's such a hype environment in the Macaulay um I'm excited for soccer because like growing up like my school was so small like we didn't have soccer like just soccer isn't a thing so like I don't know that much about it you know like coming to WVU like I've, I've tried to learn and pick up the sport and I think it's really really cool it's I mean it's the fastest growing sport like in the United States so like I'm very very excited for that um season just to learn a lot more about it so yeah Soccer, soccer environments, they, they get a lot of people in that, in that stadium there. So Dick Delesque might be rocking this fall. A couple yeah, more- oh, they will be, trust me, like Dick Delesque will be rocking if I have any part in it. <laughs> a couple more for you. Um, kind of a hypothetical here, but would you rather West Virginia beat Pitt and Virginia Tech, but then not do well in the Big 12 this season? Or would you rather West Virginia lose to both Pitt and Virginia Tech but make the Big 12 championship game in football? Hmm. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I'm, like, leaning, like, I want to say, like, I'd rather us, like, you know, beat Pitt and Virginia Tech just because, obviously, like, those are our rivals. But um, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to have to go. I'd rather lose against Pitt and Virginia Tech and do really good in the Big 12 um, just because that, you know, I feel like that would be a lot more hype to have a really, really fun postseason because we haven't really had a fun postseason in a while. Um, but obviously I hope we, you know, we beat everyone. So um, I, I definitely um, want to beat Pitt and Virginia Tech because I'm, I'm scared if we lose to leave you know, leave the stadium as the Mountaineer and that environment. So, um, I mean, whatever happens, happens. But, um, yeah, I think that's my final answer is I'd rather do better in the Big 12. So, and then going kind of pivoting to basketball, what what are your expectations for this basketball team? Obviously, it's going to be a, a new look team uh, for Bob Huggins. And hopefully you keep the streak alive of the second consecutive woman Mountaineer to take a team to a final four. What's, what's that like? And what are your, what are you thinking there? 
yeah. So, um, I think it's going to be good. Um, you know, obviously I've been on this coach's caravan, so I've been listening to like coach Huggins, like tell, you know, West Virginia about this. So, um, like I'm feeling good about it. Um, I think it's, it's going to be like kind of 50, 50 on like how we we'll, obviously the whole team's new and they're coming from all over the country. So we're going to have to see how they work together and like how they have that team bond. So I think that's going to be, you know, like hit or miss on whether they're going to be able to make that bond, but like skill wise, like, I think that it's going to be a really good season. Like I feel like they've brought in some really, really good recruits. I'm very excited about Emmett Matthews Jr. Coming back because, you know, he was one of those players that like I watched a lot growing up and well like in high school I guess and so like um I'm really excited for him to come back because he was one of my favorite players and I'm excited to meet him too so that's really cool but yeah I've got a lot of like um I got a lot to live up to because like when Rebecca was in Mountain Air, you know, we went to the final four in basketball and then like our football team, like, I think our record was like nine and two like we had a good football that year too so it's like I've got a lot to live up to. I got to get everybody excited, but also like hopefully like I'm bringing some good juju back or something, but yeah, I feel good about football. I feel good about basketball. Like, honestly, like I I'm always the type that it's like, I don't even care. We could probably have the worst team ever. And I would still be like, we got this, like, we're going to win guys. Like we're going to win. Well, I, I mean this basketball game or this basketball season, last basketball. I mean, obviously, you know, we lost a lot of games, but like any home game, like all my friends, we'd be marching to the Coliseum from the PRT and I'd be like guys this is why we're gonna win today and like I would give everyone pinpoints and then we wouldn't win and they're like oh you were wrong but I was like hey guys but I have the positive mentality I was like I, look it doesn't matter how good our team is I'm still going in there thinking we're gonna win because I'm I've always been like that just you know if you have the positive mentality it's gonna make the day go by a lot better and you know and you gotta root on your team you gotta believe in them so that I try to I guess channel all that as the mountaineer <laughs> Last last thing here. If there's one thing about you or about you being the Mountaineer that you want fans, that you want everyone to know before uh, we get started here in the fall, what would that be? And what message kind of do you have to Mountaineer fans everywhere? Oh, OK. Um, I guess my message is to everybody is just to trust the climb. You know, I think a lot of times like some you know bad things happen or you know we lose a game or things like that and a lot of people like start to give up but one of the great things I love about Mountaineer Nation is that we really don't that it you know last basketball season shows we still sold out so many games even though we weren't having a good season and that's one of the great things I love about Mountaineer Nation is that we show up and that we support and so I just want everybody to continue that um you know I want people and I also want people to go to other sporting events I mean like let's fill let's sell out the Coliseum for a women's basketball game you know let's sell it out for volleyball you know wrestling gymnastics like let's like I want to like be versatile like I want every sport to be like feeling the love of Mountaineer Nation that like football and basketball gets like I I want to see the fans and I want everybody out there and you know I I want to make my year the best year ever and I want it to be great for all of the fans as well and for the teams so I'm really excited for that and so I just hope everybody shows up and gets excited um about me is I guess that like I just want everyone to know that like I'm very like honored to be in this position and I'm very excited and I guess one thing I want people to know is that I'm trying my hardest is that you know I still am human at the end of the day like I'm gonna make mistakes and you know I might not be like you know I feel like a lot of time we compare a lot of the Mountaineers and so I guess I want people to know that like I'm Mary like I'm not like the others like yeah I mean they're role models and we all are similar in the same ways but we're also different so I guess I don't want people to compare me to others as much and just remember that like I'm I'm trying my best like trust me like you can ask any of my friends or family like I am like going above and beyond to try to be the best mountaineer I can be so I'm trying my hardest um, as much as and so are these athletes so that you know we're all human at the end of the day so remember that when people go on social media to write things but I don't know I just want people to have a good we're gonna have a good year we're gonna have good seasons um you know trust the climb I say that so much but I I truly believe in it so yeah well I do appreciate you joining us um thank you for your time and this was the Mountaineer the 68th Mountaineer Mary Roush on the bluegoldsports.com podcast